Okay, finally we're there. Uh, welcome to Admin Law, uh, about 12 minutes into the, uh, into the class. Um, I'm Simon, and so I'm the lecturer and the tutor for this subject. I taught it uh, last year. Jamie Fellows is the, um, has been the lecturer for this for many years, and he actually had originally planned to take study leave, uh, but things got very, very busy and for all sorts of reasons. He is actually still here. So if you do see Jamie floating around, um, probably don't ask him how he's getting on with, in terms of his study leave, because it, uh, uh, yeah, um, he's still getting things done. Um, I have been teaching here since 2011. Uh, this is only the second time I've taught at the Master of Law, and it's, um, it sits alone. It's one of the areas of law that is actually distinct and different from other things that you do as part of your degree. And I think importantly as well, it's something that you're gonna learn that's gonna differentiate you guys from your peers, from people that don't study law, even those that do study a little bit in things like a business degree. This is one of the areas that is really only learned by lawyers. Um, it's a, it's, and it's of vital importance as well. It's a, it's a very, very, um, very, very useful, very, um, uh, very powerful, for want of a better term, set of skills to know and understand. Because really, at the end of the day, it's about twisting people's arms, and making people accountable to do things, and uh, getting and dealing with particularly government agencies in a way uh, that you're probably not accustomed to um, because you know what they have to do and you know what you have to do to make them do what you want them to do. So, uh, you know, perhaps it's a little unkind for, for me to go through and do this to, um, to be talking about uh, this, but it's, it's almost got some aspect, I wouldn't say of nastiness, but when going through the subject, you're going to learn things that uh, are going to make you less likable to government bureaucrats everywhere. Um, uh, and I say this with some sort of, a bit of tongue in cheek, but it's really, if I do my job well, I'm gonna turn you into the sort of people that bureaucrats hate, because you're going to make people accountable. You're gonna know what the limits are to their discretionary powers. And often, you're gonna be doing it in situations where you know what their limits are, and they don't. Um, and it's, it, it's both very, it can be very rewarding, it can be very humbling, it can be outrageously frustrating. Because you're gonna now know what the rules are, and you're gonna know what people's limits to power are, and you're gonna be in situations where you don't have the time or the resources to actually make them do things about it. And it can be very frustrating. So like with anything involving knowledge, learning a little bit more um, makes you aware of what you don't know, but it also makes you aware of what others don't know. Um, and appreciate, when I'm talking about government uh, bodies and public institutions and public organisations, it's actually a bit broader than just dealing with Centrelink. Who's had to call up Centrelink and had to deal with bureaucrats at some stage? I would say a good chunk of this room have. Um, uh, I, well, I don't, haven't had to gauge with Centrelink. I've certainly had to deal with uh, the Child Services Agency uh, over the last how many years. And um, they can be some quite heated conversations dealing with people, battle-hardened veterans that have had to deal with angry men whinging about their ex-wives um, day in, day out. And so I use a lot of the examples uh, in this subject. I go from, from that experience, uh, going through and doing that. Um, but you're going uh, to pick things up, and I really hope you guys get something out of it. Because let's be honest, this subject has the most boring name. If there were no Priestleys and you had to choose your subjects, everyone would choose you know, Internet of the 21st Century and Cybercrime and all the really fun sounding subjects. No one at all. This class would have like three people in it. No one would choose a subject called Administrable. It sounds boring, but it is vitally important and actually kind of useful. Um, okay, so the first bit, the first little bit of the recording is me talking about the subject broadly, this particular instance of the subject. So I'm the lecturer and the tutor. Uh, my contact details are up there, should be. Um, I'm teaching three subjects, so part of JCU uh, policy and the enshrined in their policy documents. And this is again, this is where admin law is already starting to seep into the subject. 
there are policy documents, they have predetermined decisions that, unless I have good reason not to, I can't um, choose to not follow. And more importantly, when I went back to Mandy and said, Mandy, I need some consultation time, paid consultation time, here is the JSU policy document. It says, in this particular section, staff must be available. All staff, teaching staff, must be available for students to contact them. Uh, and so my contract got amended and got more money. So there you go. Sometimes you can, get, you can actually get a very, very personal result from knowing a little bit about public law. Um, I said I stream on YouTube. The, the link's in there. Uh, well, you can just Google my name and JCU. Don't just Google my name because I have a very common name. It's like I'm 206th in the, in the list of Simon Walkers on YouTube. So don't sit there scrolling through it. It'll, um, so if you type my name plus JCU or law or something, it'll probably come up. Um, I'm living in level three of Building 27 at the moment with the uh, business online team. And you'll notice there, there's a law online email. This is Van's idea. Now that we're moving the law degree, it's going to have an online uh, offering from next year. Uh, we're using a separate email alias. So you guys can email that. And kind of unfortunately, the person who's going to be responding to your emails is probably me as well with my tech hat on. Um, I've been a oh, lawyer for not that many years. I've been at law school for a really long time, uh, but I'm actually a software developer, an analyst, software developer by trade. So I've worked for a bunch of large entities over the years, and so I'm building some software for the um, for the college at the moment and doing some support. So if you do get an email, a tech response from Law Online, it's probably from me. Any questions about that so far? You guys all know where Building 27 is. It's a bit scary to be asking that question to third years, but yeah, you never know. Um, it's that way, about 300 meters. Okay. Um, if you are trying to get in touch with me, my timetable is about to pop up there and it's very, very heavily loaded towards the second half of the week. So it's the consultation times are slotted in there somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Um, oh, there's a delay by the way, whenever I do something because this is actually coming live from YouTube. So there's a delay from me streaming for about 10 seconds. So I try to take that into account when doing it. But um, uh, yeah, apologies for that, it's a bit slow. Okay, um, you can also enter questions in the chat too. A bit tricky to read that resolution, but if you do log it onto the site, ask questions and feel free. Most of you guys have got laptops in class, in fact. Um, if you do have questions that you want answered in class, these things, I'm not intending this to be this, me just regurgitating information to you guys. It should be a bit more interactive than that. I love it when people stop and go, oi, explain that point again. The whole point of having somebody here doing this sort of thing, talking about stuff in the lecture, is to hear something in a certain way with a certain style. What I wholeheartedly recommend though, given the opportunity, is to hear the same thing, the same subject matter, explained by other people as well. It's a really, really useful way of doing it, going through and reading different things. And this is why we recommend with things like the textbooks, uh, we do have one prescribed text, but you know, generally, um, if you can, go and read some of the other ones too, particularly if it's on areas that you're, that you're struggling with in terms of the subject matter. Um, I think it's this one, I think Jamie prescribed. Um, this is Kelly. Um, and the other recommended text is Crakey. This one's, to be honest, actually, I personally think it's a little bit better, but Jamie likes this one better, so that's why this, this is the prescribed text. And so the, the structure of the, of the subject will generally follow this one. But to be honest, administrative law is actually a pretty structured area of law as well. Um, I'm teaching three this semester, teaching stage one contract law, which most of you guys should have done, and trust. Is anyone here doing trust as well? Just a handful, or a five. <laughs> Um, tr yeah, trust is quite a different kettle of fish. This is actually pretty structured material. Trust is all over the show. It's, um, it's very, very hard to teach and hard to learn as a result. Um, and to be honest, the grades reflect it for these subjects. This subject amongst the stage threes, uh, this and equity, have a, something of a reputation of being a little, a little easier. Um, and that's certainly true for the first half. Um, but just make note, Jamie wrote the exam last year and he'll write it again this year. Um, be very, very mindful. Jamie's very, very happy to give you guys pretty straightforward, quite easy stuff for LA101. I presume you taught most of you for that subject. But um, when doing this and when doing legal ethics, the exams are noticeably harder. Um, so the semester test has a reputation for being quite easy in the subject, but the exam a little bit harder, um, particularly 
to do with time management. And people find that, that thing. But I'll get to that. Exam's a long way away from now. And on our pathway to the exam, we are... <laughs> There's a thing called the James Cook University Act. And the James Cook University Act says, and it's just been changed just recently, by the way, in 2017, says uh, there is to be a council, and the council is to issue statements of essentially predetermined administrative decisions. We call those policies. And those policies are not the same as rules, or at least not rules, legislative rules. And we'll spend a little bit of time on that later because it's something that I found coming up, particularly my own dealings with this institution, um, where there's this real lack of understanding of what the difference between policies, procedures, and powers are. But we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Nonetheless, there is some policy guidelines in teaching and learning, and subject outlines enshrine all of the, the key information that we use for this particular subject. Okay, so everything in that subject outline is essentially a predetermined decision. Um, and so if, for whatever reason, you are following the subject outline and you're doing what it says in there, and we've made a mistake, that's going to be on us. This is something you can use to twist our arms to get the result you want. So we start to see something of a theme here. It's, it's really... Um, it's all about you guys getting what you want in regards to public organizations. And sometimes private organizations. Who here is in the Law Student Society? All right, wrong answer. Who here? <laughs> you, should all, you should all be um, in the various student societies. It'd be crazy not to. Law is an incredibly networked discipline. It's one where you spend your whole time building up your reputation over a long period of time, admittedly, and then you're going to lose it in the space of a paragraph, but it's very, very important to know the other people in this room, to know the other people more broadly, and to also know the, the pieces of information that you're going to pick up in those sorts of environments can be vastly more useful than you can do literally spending years going through in class. Um, well, that, that's a very kind. I mean, I made the point that uh, I think I learned more about stage one torts, sitting in outside George Kniep and the lawyers on the lawn event talking to all of the third years than I think I did for most of the lectures where I was just taking notes the whole time and not really getting it. Uh, so maybe that's just me, but I do recommend to get involved. Definitely, definitely get involved. Okay, uh, 130 hours. It's one of the rules that we have somewhere in our, hidden in our policy instruments at JCU. Each subject is designed to be 130 hours long. And the team that I'm working on in terms of the subject design, in terms of redoing the LLB, is actually going through and analyzing that, actually going through and working out for each given task how long you should be spending on it. Now, you guys, most of you guys would have had Chris Davies or Tom Middleton at some stage where they say, here you go, here's, here's some cases, go to it. You know, go to it, you go, here's a bunch of cases, go to it. And the lectures are just really designed to sort of supplement your own learning and doing it. And I actually do encourage that style, that essentially taking responsibility for your own time and managing it. The days of sort of spoon feeding information, I mean, that's for taste. This is university. You guys are aware of that. You're in stage three. And so when we say 130 hours, that's actual work. Not, the, I mean, let's be honest. We can sit there, got the headset on, listening to lectures, and we're just flicking through our phones, doing things on a laptop, buying things on Amazon, whatever we do with our time. It's, um, it's really about the, the actual focused learning task that you guys are, um, uh, that we, th this is really aimed for you guys to go through and, and to do, to actually achieve at the end of it, all of the graduate attributes. Um, and so we, hand on heart, are gonna say, these people are good enough to graduate. Here, get the little, Wear the hat and get the, um, get the little document. Okay. Um. No, yes. If this looks like I've hacked it together in Microsoft Paint, maybe it's a coincidence. Um, it's, got the, um, it's got the dates on there for your uh, census date. Do you guys know what the census date is or means? It's the date 
by which the federal government, or you, depending on how you look at it, um, become obliged. It's, it's essentially, it's the contract date. So that, that's the point in time where the money gets assigned to HEX, for those that are in HEX, or the fees become due if you are paying cash. Each of those things happen. All right, but, but you've actually got a period of about three weeks after that by which you can choose to unenroll from the subject and it to not impact your GPA. Um, GPA matters. You may not think it matters, but it really does. Particularly for those that are going out into the world and are going to have to compete, particularly those that have to compete all across Australia for, um, you know, for graduate type positions. Um, now, a couple of things to note there is that we don't all have the same set of circumstances. We just simply don't. We're not, we, we don't have the same level of uh, education background. We don't have the level of support. We don't have the financial support. We don't have that evenness in terms of doing it. And so really, what I say in terms of um, GPA staff is that it's yourself that you should be pushing. Um, just do the best that you possibly can. And to be honest, for most of you, I think a good target, possibly a little bit late because this is stage three, is to try and get your GPA high enough to get into the honours program. Um, I think it's five and a half, which is pr pretty small. Is it five and a half? Is it six? Five. Is it five? I thought, I thought, it, well, I thought it, was, it used to be five and a half to get into, but you had to finish with a five, um, which isn't actually very high. Um, you do have to do a thesis, which is a lot of work, but it's something that every person should really be thinking and targeting and, and really wanting to, to go through and do that. But um, uh, the number of electives is also a little bit tricky as well because it, it takes up one or two elective slots. Okay, uh, your assessment, so the online test is, oh, it's pretty late this year, actually. That's quite late in the piece. Usually it's a little bit earlier than that. So week seven, that's, uh, I think that's just before the break. I think we've got a late, a late break. I think it's after week eight this, this semester. Um, it's an online test. Now, the, you guys are doing law, right? And you're stage three. So you've already invested a huge amount of time and effort and energy, and tears, into your education at this point. And for most of you, as well as the degree, most of you will be seeking entry to the legal profession as well. Um, I probably don't need to reiterate the case of uh, young Ms. Jordan Leveri and how Tom Middleton would chase after her every time she'd go and get admitted and say, this person is not fit and proper character to become a solicitor. Um, and I would be, I think you'd be crazy to not have that thought in the back of your mind whenever you're about to do anything slightly shonky in relation to your legal education because um, it'll all come tumbling down. And so as a result though, um, we actually have quite a deal of faith in you guys. I taught trust accounting uh, with Jamie. Jamie took the legal ethic class. I, I took the trust accounting subject this year and we had uh, take home exams. Um, Van Lee for tax law. We have take home exams and the, this test, this online test, doesn't use Respondus and you've got a wide window in order to go through and do that test. Um, you don't have to, um, it's not closed book, you can have whatever books and whatever notes you like, you've got full access to the internet to do it, which we think is also a little bit more authentic anyway. Um, so that test is there, it's 20%. It does require you to be a bit thoughtful, the questions. I did go through and revise them last year. You're not going to just be able to guess your way through it. It's multi-choice, but you won't be able to guess. But um, don't sit there with your friends and do the, do the test. You'll, yeah, it'll, it'll, all of those things always end up badly. Okay, now the other piece of assessment for this um, is actually a lot more flexible than it appears to be there. Last year, what I found is that I would run uh, tutorial uh, presentations. So during the shoot, I would have the shoot presentation and some people would come through and do the presentation and you are more than welcome to do this. It's a useful experience to go and talk to the tube for the first 10 minutes. What I found though, is that generally people are preparing for the tube. And so then usually it means they don't go to the previous tube, which is kind of annoying. It also means when you turn up, particularly the good ones, are going through talking for 15 minutes and essentially answering the tube question. And so then we're sort of stuck with 35 more minutes and it's like, okay, what's everyone's thoughts on that? And what we found, what I found anyway, is that it, there were also a lot of people with full-time sort of work commitments too. And so what I said is that, look, if you guys want to, if you, if you don't want to or you can't um, pre uh, present during a tube, 
itself, send me an email and we'll just book a time. It doesn't really matter any time. I said, Mondays and Tuesdays are good for me. And just go somewhere in, in the building 27, steal a room, and we'll just do the presentation there. And so I found about half the class took that up last, last year. Um, means that you don't have the, <laughs> means you don't have your peers looking at you and you know, essentially critiquing how well you're speaking. But to be honest, particularly towards the end of the semester, you'd have people turn up and there'd be three people in the room, two of which are presenting. So that, that factor was kind of moot by the end of it as well. Um, what's your guys' thoughts on that, by the way? Was, is that going to be work for you people or would you rather we do it all in class? What's, what's everyone's thoughts? No, it doesn't worry. Most people, it doesn't worry you either way, turning up and doing it. Just do what we're told. Just tell us what we need to do to get an HD so we can go, so we can go home. Um, okay, so that's, if that's all right, that's what we'll do. Um, this class is a bit smaller than it was last year, and so it's probably all right to just send me an email, and I'll just book people in for time slots. I did have a spreadsheet last year, and it, just, it was more hassle than what it was worth. So just send me an email with your preferred time slot, and it also means that we can have multiple people. Um, the trouble with having it during the shoots is that I mean, you can only have two people in each shoot preparing for that week. So if it was a week that you wanted to do, and somebody else got there early, it was a bit annoying. So um, if we're happy with that, if you've got, and I believe we do this in pairs as well. Yeah, you do, it's, it's in pairs. I mean, I guess this is group work. If you don't want to do it in a pair, that's fine. Send me an email. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I've always been a little bit uh, sort of, uh, curious about how law students work in groups. You may or may not be aware of this, but working in groups is a core graduate attribute for the business degree. It's not for the law degree. Ours is something like collaborate effectively. And so oddly, law as a profession sort of stands alone in that we're not actively encouraged to work in teams. And times where we've had group work, to be frank, law students as a group are appallingly bad at working in teams. Um, and again, we don't encourage you guys to do that. It's not the core part of the function. We don't start you out doing it from the first, for the first year. Um, and so there are skills that you, know, that you do obviously have to pick up for life, but they're not a core function of this particular degree, which seems a little bit curious when I say it like that, but it, it really isn't. Okay, any other questions about assessment? I'm just going to close this. Uh, textbooks, I think I showed you, uh, I said, I think Cranky's better than, than the other one, Kelly. This one's a little light. So you can get through the subject perfectly well with just this book. Um, go through and read some cases, use the lecture slides, and you'd be able to answer most of the things in it. This one's more in depth. So if you do want to go um, and actually analyze, particularly some of the big cases that we do in more depth, uh, that, um, that can be a worthwhile thing as well. Has anybody bought either of those books? Any stage, squash the money out. I've, is this one very expensive? So I looked at this. 75, okay. For, for a law textbook, that's actually probably all right, I would think. Um, okay. Uh, I do community legal. Um, I've got another session tonight with PPLS. I haven't done it for, for years, but um, one thing I did find when doing, working with grads, so this is either final year law students or those that have finished and doing their PLTs, and I was sitting there and we'd, something would come up. Oh, you know, find out about the, the rules of bailment for car parks. Okay, and I, and I turned around, turned to Grace and said, okay, first things first, go to, go to Halsbury's and, and have a look. And you just get this, what? Yeah, yeah you just go into the thing, go into Westlaw and go into um, the laws of Australia, just, just have a look. And you just get this blank look. What, Simon, what are you talking about? And so, okay, so go through, show them how this thing works, and here's a little database, and it has all of the subject matter and areas, and particularly for obscure areas of law, it's all in there, and I literally, three times this happened to me, and two of them, they were almost in tears. Why were we not told this at university? Uh, particularly for those doing torts. Who's doing torts B right now? Oh, no one, okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for this piece of information after you've already needed it. Um, the, the, the bad part is, a lot of the database stuff, we, the, um, Alice goes through and shows everybody at the start in the first few weeks of, of first year, and it's really unfortunate because 
we probably should have some sort of refresher thing later because you don't know what you're looking at when you're first starting it and then later on you've forgotten and we don't have any memory of it. So I would just recommend spend 20 minutes of your life just refreshing yourself by going through just to find that particular thing uh, and it'll, you'll, you'll find it'll help. It'll help a lot in a whole bunch of areas. And again, it goes back to that things that are explained by different people. Um, Kelly is going to explain certain concepts different from the Crakey and was it Douglas? Crakey and Macmillan. They're just going to explain things differently. Um, Jamie very kindly has put all of his lecture slides, um, screencasts from two years ago into LearnJCU. So you can go through and access those and, and listen to Jamie talk and listen to me talk. Um, I believe we have access to the Cairns lecturers, uh, which I believe is Peter Below this year as well. It's the same stuff explained by multiple people. Can do wonders. Uh, legislation, oh, law students, and this, what are we, 2019, and we're still killing many, many trees. Law exams require going and getting bits of legislation and printing them out to take to you. And half the time you don't even use most of it, but I think that's the price of open book exams. Hang on, that's the same slide. Okay, that's not going to help very much. Well, clearly, clearly, I didn't pay too much attention to that when I put it up there. Um, the, there are the, the two main acts that you have to go through are the um, is the ADJR and the JR, the Administrative Decisions uh, Administrative Decisions Review AD Administrative Decisions Judicial Review. Judicial Review Act, which is the Commonwealth one, and the Judicial Review Act, which is the Queensland one. Um, they have a lot of parallels between the two. I actually probably do recommend for the subject to actually go and get a copy of each of those. They're average in length, you know, a couple of hundred pages each. Um, with all of those things, you can go to Officeworks and do the binding thing. Uh, I don't know if I, have, if I have any spares around the office, I'll bring them in and just give them to people, but I'm not sure I have that many. That doesn't help. All right, so. What's the easiest way to do well on the subject? Well, <laughs> the, the very easy way is to do 130 hours worth of work. It's really hard to do badly on the subject if you don't actually go. If you, if you go into and put that time in and somehow don't do very well on the subject, that's our fault. We've done something wrong or something bad. Um, uh, turn up, it seems really obvious. Most of you have already managed that, which is good. Turn up here and we'll see what the class is like after about three weeks. This, again, this is a subject that probably benefits from having actually turning up to class, and uh, sounds a bit silly, but it's because administrative law, and particularly judicial review, which is the big part of it, is, is a huge hill. It's a huge, it's a single big hill, and I'll talk about it in depth when we go through it, the rest of this class. And once you've, once you've got it, once you know what the heck it is that we're doing here, everything after that starts to get easy. But getting up that hill is hard. That, that bit at the start, which is why for the first few weeks I'm going to be repeating myself a little bit to just try and help us get to that particular point. Um, talk during lectures is good. Go, I mean, not talk, not like talk about your day, your, who you're going on a date with tonight. I mean, talk with the lecturing staff, ask questions, turn it to something more of a dialogue than a monologue. Um, you, you, you should gain from that too. Uh, collaborate, network with those in this room, people in your chutes, get numbers, get names, spend time, create study groups. Uh, and look, you, you've probably heard this multiple times in the course of your degree, and the staff and Rachel telling you to do that, and Jamie and Neil telling you to do it. Um, the final one though, uh, make it something fun. This is the most boring sounding subject you can ever possibly imagine. But, you know, that's really up to you guys, how you go and approach your, uh, approach your learning. And I think also for this one, looking at aspects in your own life, can matter too. Um, actually going through and analyzing problems and situations that you're facing at the moment, particularly to deal with government organizations, but also things like not-for-profit groups, like the Law Student Society. Oh, wow, that's a, it's a fun, fun, happy times after the committee of, the, of the, the LSS ends up doing administrative law, and then they're all doing this and wanting to sue each other and... Uh, Okay, I'm going to leave that one, leave that one here. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to, um, going to transition this one over. I'll set up the slides for the rest of it. So um, with all of these, 
it does take me just a few minutes to transition between it, so we're going to take a small break. So apologies for that. It's only been like 25 minutes and 10 minutes setup time. So I'm just going to take uh, a few minutes while I go. 